The city of Glasgow College is famous for its Burns suppers. I've been involved in those Burns nights for probably two decades. It's a really, really great night and I think it's something at the college we do really well. And it's a great night for seeing people that we work with throughout the year, some of our, some of our partners and, and some of the people that really help put the college on the map throughout the year. So this is our kind of thank you to them, our Burns Supper. Obviously, times are different, so we've got to do it a wee bit different this year. Um, and what we thought at the college was just to give you a little taster of maybe some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes at those Burns Suppers. So what I wanted to do tonight, I wanted to top and tail your traditional haggis. There's nothing better than for me and the chef is walking through that room with the haggis held high, walking through to the piper. Um, and I, I'm again, really, really going to miss it. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you two super simple, traditional Scottish dishes that sit really well before and after your haggis. So we're going to be making the classic soup Cullen Skink. Potatoes, onion, smoked haddock, little bit of milk, little bit of cream, bay leaf, nothing simpler. But honestly, I think it's one of the kings of the world when it comes to soup. It's an incredible pot of soup. And after that, Scotland's probably the most famous dish. I'm going to make a traditional cranekin. So fresh raspberries, we've got some lovely honeycomb. We've got some beautiful tamdu, single space aid malt. Some lovely double cream, our oatmeal, and that's it. So really super simple, really easy dishes to follow. The first thing I want to do is actually get the dessert started. So what I want to do is I want to take some, some oatmeal and just pop that in a pan. And again, with this kind of thing, I don't really worry too much about amounts, but I will provide recipes. You'll find them on the, the college website for, for both these dishes. So got some oatmeal on there. We're probably looking at a medium heat. And what we want to do is just let that kind of toast away a little bit and just, just get some heat. Whilst that's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of cups of milk. And then I'm going to take some smoked haddock and I'm just going to pop that in to the milk with a little bay leaf. And what I want to do with that is I really want to just simply poach it. And what I'm trying to do is extract as much of that lovely smokiness out of the fish as possible, which is then going to flavour the soup. The reason I always do the oatmeal and honey and the whiskey first is because it takes so long to cool down. And it has to be really at room temperature before you can start thinking about adding it to your, your cream. So we've given that a wee minute or two. To that, I'm going to add some beautiful Scottish honeycomb. Nice generous lump in there. And we'll just let that mix with our oatmeal. And I don't know if you can hear that, but you can tell how hot that is. It's just starting to sizzle. Our burn suppers, they're the, the hottest ticket in town, as they say. It's a, a really good night. I once had to ask the, the Prime Minister to move her burn supper, because she asked me to do it at number 10. I had to ask her to change the date because I was not going to miss the college burn supper. So I had two, two burns nights in very quick succession. So honey, oatmeal, to that we're going to add just generous few measures of whiskey. I'm just going to pop a, a lid on top and that just extinguishes the flame. And we'll turn that off. And there you can see we have a, I mean the whole kitchen just smells a, a whiskey. So just leave that there to cool. Next thing I want to do is I want to get the base of that soup sorted. And the base, I've got a really nice, a big white onion, and I'm just going to finely chop that onion. Nice as fine, as fine as you can get it. But again, what we want to do with this is just extract as much flavor as possible from it. So run the knife through. 
and I'll get a pan on here. A good knob of unsalted butter. And we'll get those onions in. And what I want to do with the onions is I just want to sweat them down. So what I want to do is try and get rid of as much moisture as possible, but I don't want to create any colour. It's all about just being patient with the heat. It doesn't have to be hot. So we're just softening down or sweating down, as the technical term would be. And I do a lot of burn suppers. I do a lot of traditional Scottish food, especially when I travel. The most talked about ingredient that I travel with is haggis. And I like it, I mean it's shortbread type Scotland. But I really do think it's a great product. Talking about shortbread, look, I even get dressed up in my kilt. So taking these potatoes, some, some Maris Pipers, and I'm going to pop them in with the butter and the onion. Just going to put a little bit more heat. So I'm going to dice up all those potatoes, I'm going to sweat them off. added the potatoes to the butter and the onions and you can see that it's, it becomes quite kind of sticky. The haddock I'm just going to turn off and that's just been on a really low simmer for a couple of minutes and what I want to do is that lovely infused milk I want to just pop in. And we're going to put that to one side because that fish is already cooked so we don't want to add that to the soup at this stage. We just want to cook those potatoes and I'm always a big fan. I always say that if you cook soup the day before, it always tastes better the next day. Culling skink's a wee bit different. I find culling skink made and then eaten straight away. You get loads and loads and loads of fresh flavour and it's kind of, it doesn't become kind of stodgy. While that's cooking away, I'm going to take some double cream. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla bean. Again, this is probably the only non sort of traditional ingredient I'm going to add. And I'll be honest, I quite like this sort of thing here, this little product. It's much better than pods, because um, pods cost an absolute fortune, and from the supermarket they're always pretty rubbish. But I always find that's a good in-between. So, I'm going to let that cook, and I'm going to whisk this cream. You can actually start to see the soup, it just slightly thickens and what that's telling me is the potatoes are cooked, the so starch is starting to come out of the potatoes, it's starting to thicken up and you can leave that on as long or as little as you like. I quite like having a tiny wee bite in the potatoes. So from there I'm going to take our smoked haddock, I'm just going to pull the, the skin off. And I'm just going to flake that in to the soup. Just a little bit. I'm actually going to turn that off. And just flake that in. We want to leave that relatively chunky. And bear in mind that you, you cooked the fish when you poached it to get all that lovely flavour out of it. I'm going to give that a little, just a little stir just to get that in there. We'll move this out of the way. Now again, I'm going to break the rules a little bit. I'm going to add some dill, and I, I know from previous 
not to mess about too much with traditional recipes, especially recipes from the northeast, because they don't like the recipes getting messed about with too much. But I'm just going to add a little bit of colour, a little bit of dill. I'm just going to give that a little final taste. It looks. <laughs> It's great when you taste something that gives you that involuntary smile. You know you've done something right, and it is so quick and easy. It's an incredible soup, absolutely incredible. So we'll let that sit there while we finish the cranakin, and then we can serve up. So, cranakin, semi whipped to cream, so you can see it's still quite runny. To that, I'm going to add the raspberries, but I'm going to save a couple. I'll save a couple for garnish. Always thinks nice. And then I'm going to add our honey and oatmeal mixture. And we just want to fold that through. So, and we can be, be quite rough. We can break up some of those raspberries and some of it will be kind of coloured. And each little mouthful of this should be a wee bit different from the last. So we're almost there, just ready to plate up. So just got a couple of little things to do. So I'm going to finish culling skink with a little bit of double cream. It doesn't need it, it is optional, but it really does enrich that soup. And you know you're getting something really special just with that little pop of double cream. And at the end, we move that to one side. And our cranicum, we're just going to build, build that up in the glass. You don't need that much, it's really quite rich, but you've got that amazing balance of the whiskey, the oatmeal, the honey, and then mixing that with that luscious double cream, and then the sharpness of those raspberries. So what I want to do now, I always like to kind of pop cranicking off, so I'm just going to pop a little bit of that oatmeal mixture on top. We'll pop on a couple of these beautiful raspberries and we're going to finish that off with some mint I've taken from my garden. That's what's handy about working at home. We'll move that out of the way. We'll get tidied up. Remove that. And the last thing I've got to do is get a wee nip of whiskey. Well, so the last thing I've just really got to say is to wish you and yours an amazing Burns night from everyone at the City of Glasgow College. And I am really looking forward to getting back in and getting this on a table for real. See you all very soon. Cheers. <laughs>